Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this fake PSP data frog thing I picked up from AliExpress. I'm not fully sure what to expect from this device, but it looks pretty cool from the packaging so far and I can't help but be intrigued exactly what this thing does. From what I can tell, it's just like a glorified emulator machine, so it plays a couple of different emulators. So I'll be testing out exactly what it can do. I'll be leaving links to it in the description down below if you're interested in checking it out yourself. Maybe wait till the end of the video to see what I actually think of it, see if it's useful and let's see what it can do. Let's jump right into this. So in today's video, I'm trying out something a little bit different. I actually have a tree camera set up right now. I'm not sure how it's gonna work. I have my main camera right here. I have camera two above pointing towards the device right here. And then I have my C920, which I'm pointing at right now. So I actually have a triple camera set up. I'm not sure how the angles are, but I'm experimenting a little bit. And I thought this would be the perfect way to test this out to see how it goes. So we're actually gonna be diving a little bit further into this device right now. So we can see from the front, it's actually Datafrog and the device shape overall is very PSP-like. What we have on the front is PVP Game Brighter backlit screen, whatever that means, who knows. <laughs> we have some extra information on the side with the different colors. In this case, I just have a black version of the device. On the back then we have some more information. Apparently it's a digital game system. The console is slim, portable and trendy. These are all important things you need when you're buying a PSP, of course. Uh, digital multi-platform device can play on TV. So it does actually have, I believe, an AUX to uh, RCA cable. So you can actually connect this up to a TV, which is quite interesting. The backlit function of the screen ensure players can play everywhere. So <laughs> I'm not really sure <laughs> where they got this phrasing, but anyway, we can play anywhere with the backlit feature. Uh, with powerful recharge pack includes an AC adapter and lithium ion. Battery four to seven hours of continuous play. Now this is interesting to me. If this is a good portable little emulation machine that's not too expensive, with four to seven hours battery life, this could actually be pretty interesting. Especially considering you could put an SD card in here. I'm assuming you can fit some sort of external storage. You could potentially do a lot of cool things with this device. So I'm curious to see how it goes. It could actually be really cool. So enough checking it out. Let's actually open the device up. So what I'm gonna be doing is just taking the package off, taking it out and let's seeing what's inside. So the first thing we have is the actual console itself, which I'm gonna be putting to the side for the moment to see what other accessories we have in here. We also have the AC power brick with the RCA cables here with the red, white, and yellow. We have our USB cable. Oh, this is an old school cable. This is before micro USB. This is what we used to use to charge PS3 controllers, I believe. So this is kind of interesting to see that here. And finally, this is also a surprise. We get headphones in the box. Some phones don't even come with headphones in the box, but this cheap fake PSP from China comes with headphones, but it's actually no stereo headphones, I believe. Oh, but it's these really cheap plasticky like pound shop headphones that are gonna probably cramp your ear and just give a, uh, God, I'm getting flashbacks to these shitty headphones when you didn't have your own money. And we get uh, what seems to be a user manual inside here also. So let's move everything else out of the way. Let's take a look at the PSP itself. So I'm gonna be taking it out of its packaging and right away we see it's very PSP-like. Our arrow buttons, which uh, don't feel anything like a PSP. They're very clicky though. So if I bring them just to my mic for a second. So they actually do have a nice tactile bump to them. They're a little bit heavy to press, but they're not anything too crazy, surprisingly. Same with the A, B, X, Y buttons, but let's continue back with the buttons. So we have our analog buttons here. We have uh, our slider here, which I'll talk a bit about in a moment. We have our normal uh, layout here, which is uh, actually X, Y, A, B. So it's the Nintendo layout in this case. We have a plus and minus. Uh, and then we also have a select and start. We have the two normal PSP top shoulder buttons, which ooh, duh, don't feel so good. And then on the back, what we have is a headphone port. We have the USB, I guess, for charging, a micro SD card, and then I assume this is the power on. It looks like a power on. Ah, okay, there's more text on the back. So there's the on off slider, the TF, which I guess is just the SD card slot, the USB, the headphone, and TV out. Okay, and then there's actually a microphone in here. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope you guys can see this. There's actually a camera on this, a video. What does it say? A video 10 megapixel. For some reason, I doubt that. 10 megapixel. Why is there a camera on this thing? I don't understand. And it's the 8 gig version. So I think it probably has 8 gig internal storage on this. Then there's these weird grills on the back. And this one seems to have holes in it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this on camera or not. But this one seems to have holes in the slots. So possibly there's a speaker back here. But who knows? Then we have some screw holes here around the side thing as well. But overall it's extremely slippery plastic so it's not something you would drop but it's one of that very smooth kind of 
uh, textured plastic. It's you can see it's a fingerprint magnet here on my C920. It's very very mushy, um, and it does not feel super comfortable, but not uncomfortable either. It doesn't feel bad. It feels very PSP like. Now what? I don't like is the ridges here they're not flush they're actually like indented and bumped out so it doesn't feel super comfortable not something you would catch your hand in exactly but it's not the most comfortable thing I've ever held before so I'm not too sure about that but the shoulder buttons on the PSP these two uh, Eleanor buttons here were very very nice they had like a little bit of resistance to them but a nice click at the end so there was a bit of a press but these seem to have a very weird press click it's it's like a solid button but it doesn't it just doesn't feel right i think i'm so i, I played the psp a lot when i was younger so i really had it 20, basically 24 7 in my hand when i had my psp so it doesn't feel exactly right in this case something feels a little bit off but maybe that's not necessarily a bad thing if you didn't use a psp this won't throw you off exactly i would guess so overall quite cool so far the build quality is not that bad let's actually turn this on and see how it looks i'm going to be placing it down flat and i'm going to be turning it on okay so we do have an indication light here hopefully you can see that okay and then we get the flashing to some game screens i see tech and i see a couple of other things going by and then it's brought to <laughs> Probably the weird, oh my god, okay, we have sound on this too. I'm actually going to uh, see if there's maybe a setting to turn that down. So old school. Is it a touchscreen? Okay, it, it, I thought it would be a touchscreen. It would be nice to have, but of course it's not. Let's just go back out and look at what actual settings we have here. So we have the video option, music, photo, ebook. I wonder if you can install PDFs on this. If this is a brighter screen, it might actually not be that bad. Browser, recorder, stopwatch, setting dv and camera now one thing i will actually do just in case i hope the camera can pick this up i'm gonna see if i can turn the display brightness higher it's very weird okay so this seems to be the max brightness we have the camera option and then we have what seems to be a bunch of games wof street fighter 2 the king of fighters metal slug fat fury pro gear samurai punisher f f, f, f fight i don't know if you can tell that in the camera but it's actually spelled f f i g h t so f fight dino Games, GBA, 3D Arcade, Battle City, Super Mario, Capcom, <laughs> Three Wonders, Contra, Knights, and Dragon Ball. So there is actually some games pre-installed here, it seems to be. I think the one that I want to actually take a look at right away is actually Contra to see how this plays or if it plays at all. So I'm going to just try to launch this right away. So we have a couple of options here, restart, load progress, setting. In this case, I'm going to just go to restart and see what happens with this. Um, hopefully you guys can see that okay down here. Um... Okay, it has speakers. All right, so let's see if this actually works. Okay, so I do quickly want to mention, it seems like some of the lighting in the screen wasn't that easily picked up. So what I did is I recorded extra screens in post. So not everything I'm talking about in the video matches up to what you're seeing on screen. This screen was a little bit difficult to catch on camera, so I tried to do my best to capture it again in post. So apologies about the quality of the screen. It's a little bit tricky to catch. Hopefully that's okay. I'll improve it again for future videos. This is a learning experience. So that's why some of the screens don't really match up and that's why the angle is different. I had to re-record some things. Thanks for understanding. Love you guys. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, I, I have to be honest. I have not played Contra before. So let's see if this works. So I can seem to run. Okay, that's nice. I can jump. I can lie down. I can aim up. All right, everything seems to work so far. Okay, so shooting does work. So I can actually play this. So this is actually quite loud. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So let's see. How do I do the... Oh, I see now. Okay. So hopefully you guys can see this. So what we have is a select and start button. But then we have a plus and minus. So from my knowledge, I guess this would, the plus and minus are the volume on this. So I'm actually gonna unpause it. Um, so I'm gonna get take some damage here and I'm gonna just mush the minus. So this actually is the, the volume controls. It's a bit of a weird placement for volume controls, but it works so I can't complain too much, I guess. Um, so the screen brightness overall is okay. I hopefully you guys can see this. I'm trying to point it towards me as well. So it's a very strange angle. So from up and down, it loses all of its quality instantly, but from left to right, it actually holds it. So I can show this on my top camera right here. So you can see as I tilted vertically, all the color gets washed away instantly. It's like loses a lot of its quality, but left and right, it seems to hold it. Okay. The light is in my, in my screen right now, but you can see it actually holds it quite well. We're going to back out. I'm going to plug in an SD card into this and let's see what else we can do. 
Okay, so what I have right here, I'm actually going to be going back to the menu first just to make sure nothing bad happens. I have an SD card slot. It's a micro SD in this case, which I don't know which direction it goes, but I guess we'll see if it slides in comfortably in one way. It does not, so I'll try it like this maybe. Okay, it seems to go in very flush. It's not something you could accidentally press. It did actually take quite a bit of force to get in here. And it seemed to give me an indication that the SD card is red. So you can see here on the screen, there's a small SD icon. So it does actually have an SD card inside. So for the moment, all I've actually put on this is I didn't actually try to use any of the e-reader or browser or other applications. Again, that's something I'd probably leave for another video. So if you guys would like to see me going into all the extra features in this, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be sure to get back to it. But for now, what I want to check is if the games can actually read off this. So what I've installed in this is uh, some uh, NES games, some GBA games and some GBC games. So I'm curious to see how these work, if at all. And then I'm going to be checking step by step for that. So what I'm going to be doing for now is going down to the GBA option right here which you can see I have here at the moment. I'm going to be clicking this open and we're going to see if it can read my files. Oh, it seems to actually have games pre-installed on this. Interesting. So there's actually not most of these games I actually didn't put on here. I only put on games I actually owned. So it's curious. So we actually have the King of the Fighters GBA, uh, some Asian letters GBA. I don't know if this is uh, Japanese or Chinese. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Crash Bandicoot, Metal Slug, Super Mario NES, some more letters. So according to this, <laughs> I don't know if this is true, but there's 12,400 files on this. I don't know if it's possible to go to a directory where I can just see the games in my SD card, uh, but I don't seem to find them here. However, if I actually have all these other <laughs> GBA games, I'm not sure if I can complain too much. Tekken Advanced GBA. Okay, let's try run it. I'm in the GBA emulator. Let's try run it. We'll restart. We'll see how it goes. So I don't actually have any load progress. So let's just try restart it, see if this runs. So I actually, I've never actually played Tekken on GBA. I didn't know Tekken was on Game Boy, um, but apparently it is at least, I don't know if it, what market this was released to, but I'd never seen it in Europe. So I'm actually gonna give it some volume here just so we can hear a little bit. We'll jump into the arcade and we'll see what characters we can play. Oh, so it's really old school Tekken. Okay, I see. So it's been a while since I played this, but let's go some old school King, see how this works. We're going to be playing against Jin now, so that's kind of crazy. Wow, this actually does not look... Okay, it actually doesn't feel that bad either. Uh, I'm not sure how it felt on the actual Game Boy, so I can't be sure. Although Tekken is much more my jam than Street Fighter, I'll be honest. Uh, so in this case, I actually won't get absolutely destroyed by Jin here. Um, but it feels pretty what the hell was that damage but it feels pretty good i'll be honest the screen quality overall is fine of course it's uh, we're emulating a gba screen or a gba game on a much bigger screen so we can't expect a lot in that regard but this is pretty pretty fun i'll be honest this is impressing me more than i expected but we see the tekken works pretty well now i can't actually i want to try a gba game that i actually know much better Okay, so sadly I can't seem to get any filter list working, so I won't be able to find the games I actually wanted to play. Although I do see Crash Bandicoot here in GBA, and that's a game I vaguely remember playing a long time ago. So this will give me a good indication of how this actually plays. Um, I would like to test later on, but today's video is already pretty long, how saving and other features actually work. So again, if you'd like to see a further follow-up video on this, where I go a bit more deep dive into all the different settings, let me know in the comments down below. I would actually be really interested. This device is uh, a little bit more interesting than I expected, but if it actually does have this many GBA games on it, uh, it would be very cool. So I am actually going to be turning the sound down just because it's a little bit loud on this, uh, but I'll leave it on a little bit. So hopefully you can hear it as a little background noise. But so far, it actually seems to be pretty impressive. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by this. The screen is okay, as long as you're looking dead on at it. But like I mentioned before with the angle, it's still not that great. It loses a lot of quality, but left and right seems to be handle it pretty well, which is nice. But wow. <laughs> For 30 euro, assuming it does have four to five hours, this would definitely be a nice little thing to play up for portable GBA games or even portable NES games. The only thing I didn't mention too much is the actual uh, slider analog stick here. It feels really bad. If you use it directly center, it's fine. But if you go at any angle, it slides and you can see I can rotate it really, really, really easily. So I'm not sure if it's actually uh, mapped in games, but I'm going to try it for Crash Bandicoot here to see how it works, if it works at all in these games. Um, and it seems to, and it seems to work okay in this case it still feels a little bit weird i'll be honest it's not the nicest thing to use however this is actually impressing me a lot i'll be honest wow 
Uh, it seems to run Crash Bandicoot okay. This actually feels pretty fine. Um, this is a game I used to play. I'm not sure if it was this exact version. I remember I had the Spyro, uh, the red and purple, where you had to collect the cards and you could trade across games. Although I had the Crash Bandicoot game, not the Spyro game. But I uh, remember it being a lot of fun. But this feels really good the buttons are quite responsive although it isn't gba emulator you can run this on pretty much anything nowadays um but wow okay feels quite good assuming you can remap buttons it would be a nice little touch as well but i'll have to look more into that in a further video but so far uh really impressed with uh with this little device which is very interesting but yeah, again, it's nice that the charging port is a simple USB, so you can use this over a power bank. And I can't say for sure how big the battery is, but I can't imagine it's more than 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 milliamps. So assuming you have a decent battery bank, you can get a long battery out of this, which is kind of funny that this could be an actual nice little emulation machine. Compared to a PSP, it probably won't be as powerful. Because I know on a PSP, you can actually emulate PS1 games, which I doubt you can do on this. I doubt it has the horsepower for 30 euro for the whole device, but still very interesting. I'm actually going to stop playing because I'm continuing to play Crash. It's actually kind of fun. Um, but wow, this thing is uh, quite cool. I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to check it out more. Again, I'll be leaving links in the description. I'm not going to be saying 100% if you should get it or not. Um, but so far you can get a good idea of what it is and how it works for me playing it. So it's, uh, yeah, kind of more interesting than I was expecting. Wow, this is kind of cool. Um, anyway, guys, that's been today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. I'm actually quite investing in some little stuff and a little different camera setup. So uh, be sure to check out the channel. Stay around. There's going to be more exciting stuff in the future. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. Until next time, guys, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.